So yeah, I mean, like, when you're trans, you can you just count the urine pills. Hey everybody, <laughs> it's been a minute. I know, I vanished for a little while and I'm sure you were all heartbroken, but I'm here now. And uh, looking at the calendar, it's uh, it's the middle of March, which means um, that was a year ago, a year ago. It's, it's weird. Um, today is the 14th, it's pie day, and who doesn't like pie? But, um, yesterday was my, um, one year anniversary of starting HRT. Which, you might be asking, well, why didn't you just record this yesterday? And, um, you know, sometimes people just, uh, don't think to charge their camera batteries, so, you know, shut up. Anyway, um, it's weird. It's weird to kind of wrap my head around the fact that it's been an entire year. Um, leading up to last March, it felt like it was taking forever. And I say that having not come out until right before Christmas at the end of 2017. So really, it was only a few months until I started HRT. But at the time, it felt like an eternity. And oddly enough, the past year has kind of been Not like that, although. But I don't get paid by Disney, and we're talking about me anyway, so let's move on. It's almost weirder that um, we've already rolled up on a year because I did my six month um, video seemingly like a couple of weeks ago, but it was months and months and months ago, and here we are. So, you know, in that in that video, I talked a lot about um, the physical changes and um, kind of more of a primer of what, you know, somebody else starting on HRT might expect. But there's a lot more to it than that. One of the things that I've been thinking about a lot lately is um, the misperception that a lot of people have that transitioning is really um, purely a physical thing. That really the that really when we say I'm transitioning, it's all about hormones and surgeries and doing whatever is necessary to become a woman or become a man or whatever somebody is identifying as. Um, but it's... that's definitely a part of it, but that's really... that's really an aid along the road to becoming more of yourself. Transitioning is more about the process of moving about in the world more authentically. It's one of those funny things that very often, when I'm thinking about what I want to do in a video, um, a lot of what I'd like to talk about um, tends to kind of crop up um, in conversations that I see online. And, and one of the things that I've seen people talking about a lot lately is, I don't know if burden is quite the word, but a very... Um, a conversation that is very much centered on explaining what it means to be trans, not in terms that really revolve around the person who is trans themselves, but more so around 
trying to draft a conversation that explains it in a way that is palatable to the cisgender population. <clears throat> and that can be really frustrating because this is an experience that to a large extent can't really be captured in words. How a person feels is not necessarily easy to communicate because it's kind of an abstract thing. And one of the things that I've been trying to explain to a lot of people lately um, is why I am as visible as I am. I've been trying to explain to some of my friends and family that part of the reason I um, have this channel, um, that I post transy things online all the time, and I'm constantly um, talking about my transition, about trans-related topics, um, is to educate. And when I say that, it's not necessarily that I am trying to fight the good fight and educate people who don't necessarily get this. Um, though, of course, that's part of it. But really, what I am trying to do um, in my own way is, is to be visible for the closeted kids who don't know what's going on with them, who don't necessarily have a support system, who don't necessarily have the information to wrap their own minds around what's going on with themselves. And that's a feeling that I understand all too well. One of the first questions that pops up when you come out is, well, how long have you known? And the answer varies from person to person. And for me personally, it's kind of a complicated response. To a degree, I've always known and I've always had thoughts and feelings that had I actually talked about them to anybody, I would have realized that, oh yeah, little boys don't necessarily think that way. But really, I didn't have the language to explain it. Our culture does a really... Our culture does a shit job of representing us. Um, and I don't just mean in, you know, hey, Scarlett Johansson's gonna play this trans guy, cause why? When you're trying to tell a story and the creative team has no lived experience with the subject matter that they're tackling, they usually miss the mark. And there's a lot of really good content out there talking about the trans experience. Heretofore, the representation that we have seen has been pretty bad. A lot of trans narratives kind of fit in with the old Hayes Code that was in place in Hollywood that kind of set the rules about what um, what a, a queer depiction was supposed to be like. Um, and for the most part, it's tragic and flawed and the trans people that you see are the villains or some sort of deviant. Einhorn is Finkel. Finkel is Einhorn! Einhorn is a man! Oh my god! Einhorn is a man! <laughs> or, um... A serial killer. I mean, some trans girls might throw shade at you if you don't use lotion, but... Really, we're concerned with our own moisturizing regimen, um, and we don't want to wear your flesh as a skin suit. Okay? 
but whether people realize it or not and whether um, you want to argue that those depictions are few and far between um, those are the depictions that we've had and so many people internalize that that people who are not trans um, are if not outright bigoted have an image that's colored by a lot of misrepresentation um, and people who are trans are digesting the same messaging and that leads to a lot of internalized transphobia for me at least I know that I had a pretty decent idea that at least my gender wasn't quite what everybody would have expected and and that I wish I was living the way that I'm living now over a decade ago but when I was in my 20s and I put makeup on in the mirror I felt ashamed not because it's anything that I should be ashamed about but because that's what I was taught to believe and again not that anybody specifically said hey you know you're a freak but those were the messages in the air and those messages are still in the air if you go online and start looking up information about trans people you'll find hate and bigotry very quickly it comes at you in the news all the time because people are still bigoted and no matter how tough of a skin you have that bullshit really affects you so I guess what I'm trying to do with with being visible and sharing my story and my experiences is is to provide something of a counter narrative to that trans people are just like anybody else we're just people we get up in the morning we drink cups of coffee we have our likes and dislikes and it's important not just that cis people see that but that the trans kids who are coming up the trans adults who are lost and all of the people that are trying to figure themselves out have a little bit of a perspective that they are okay. It's very interesting that I'm coming up on my one year this week because um, literally the other day I had an epiphany. I looked in the mirror and realized that I don't see him anymore. Um, oh, what the hell do you mean by that? Um, A trans person's biggest critic is themselves and for so long even after I came out I started I started taking hormones and I figured out more and more of my own presentation I would still look in the mirror and go no not right I would have imposter syndrome I feel I would have feelings of being fake all of the messaging that has come my way that no matter what you do you're never a real girl um, to an extent had gotten in my brain no matter what I would do I would still see the old version of myself everything I was doing was some elaborate lie a costume if you will and I will say the one thing that HRT does do um, is it works as an aid um, I've heard I've heard described before that if you are assigned male at birth 
um, that you have been afflicted with testosterone poisoning. And that's kind of how it feels. It feels very much as if um, something happened to me. Now I'm working with doctors to treat my affliction. And the concept that people have of trans people wanting to be the opposite gender is incorrect. I didn't want to be a woman. I am one. That's how my brain functions. That's what I am. It's just that my body developed in a mismatched way. That happens. Hormone replacement therapy, as I've said before, isn't necessary, but it is an aid. And what I have found that it has done for me is all those changes I was rattling off in my six month video um, add up not so much to convey to the rest of the world that oh she looks the way she is supposed to now the way she wants to now um, but it makes it so that when I look in the mirror I don't see him anymore and honestly I don't know when it happened I don't um, it's something that I was hoping for, that when you start hormones, you're always looking for, but um, it just kind of passed me by. It was just a mundane thing that happened, and I didn't notice it, um, because I wasn't focused on that anymore. I was just focused on living my life, being myself, and one day I looked in the mirror and said, oh, cool, that matches now. So, yeah, I've rattled on for quite a while, and now I've gotten to the end, and I don't know how to wrap up the YouTube life. So I guess I'll just say thank you for being here. Um, thank you for sitting and listening to my, my diatribes about myself. I will do my best not to uh, vanish for months at a time again. But in the meanwhile, do the normal things, like, share, subscribe, leave comments, down below and uh, I'll see you around.